The Asus ZenBook 14 is one of the best student laptops in the market right now, but is it any good or it's a wasted potential? Let's review. Hey everyone and welcome back to Binocha Tech Channel. I'm Amin Khaliqi and today we're gonna reviewing Asus ZenBook 14 with Intel Core Ultra 9 285H processor along with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And also it has Intel Arc integrated graphic that we can talk about it later in the video. But first I should say, I think this laptop is not priced right. Why? Because let's be honest, Intel Core Ultra 9 for this thin chassis is not a good choice and it just make this laptop more expensive than the competitors with no extra benefits and because of that this laptop costs around $1300 which is too much and I have to say don't buy this exact model you can get Core Ultra 7 or even Ryzen 7 models of this laptop and be happy with it with almost 30% less money so before starting the review please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and ring the bell icon so you won't miss our next videos. Let's start with the body and chassis design. I should say, this laptop feels good and it doesn't feel cheap, but it's not as well made as like MacBook laptops or Surface laptops. Because this laptop priced the same as MacBook, I should compare it to that models. And I have to say, I like the build quality here, but it is not as premium looking as a MacBook in here. And uh, you can feel some flakes on the chassis, especially in the middle of the keyboard, uh, but it feels okay and I don't have any problem with it. But I have to tell you, this laptop is a fingerprint magnet, but at least you can clean this laptop with a microfiber cloth easily. As for the keyboard, I should say the keyboard in this laptop is pretty good. I can't say it is MacBook level good, but it is good and you won't find any problem with the keyboard. It has white backlight. I wish this could have better lighting underneath the keys, but it is okay too and there is no huge problem, but it is fine. Uh, as for the trackpad, we have a particularly good sized trackpad, but it could be a little bit bigger. I mean, it is good that we have uh, gestures on the trackpad, but we could get bigger trackpad uh, and Asus could easily fit a bigger trackpad and better trackpad for this laptop. As for the hinge, I have to say one axis hinge is not good at this price and because of that we have this wobbly screen which is not ideal. As for the ports, uh, we have one USB type A port on the left at only 5 gigabits per second, not good. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the right, uh, one of which uh, should be occupied by the charger with a 65 watts charger in the box and an audio combo jack and an HDMI 2.1 port, which is good. It means this laptop has enough ports for any student or anyone who wants to buy this laptop and Asus made this laptop for them. I think it's a good laptop in terms of port selection, but we could get one more USB type A port or at least get 10 gigabits on that single USB type A port. Other than that, I don't have any problem with the laptop and I can say I like using it and I can give it an 8 out of 10 score. So let's talk about the screen. The screen for this laptop is okay. It is just okay. It supports only FHD plus resolution 1920 by 1200 at only 60 Hz refresh rate. I know it is OLED, but this shouldn't be more than a thousand bucks because we can get better resolution screens like Apple MacBook Air screen in this price range. And it is odd to say that Apple has made a more valuable laptop than Asus in this price range. It is not easy to say such a thing because Asus is usually cheaper or more valuable at every price. But with this laptop, it is the story here. 
at least the color accuracy is great and the brightness is around 400 nits which is good but unfortunately the screen is too uh, reflective and you can see our soft box and light on the whole screen for the screen i will give it a 6 out of 10. it is not ideal for this price i know reflective screen is not that great but at least this display supports touch screen which is great and you can also use asus pen uh, on this laptop which is good i mean asus pen 2 or 1 should work with it without a problem i mean you can get a better screen with another asus laptop called asus zenbook s14 at this price range and with the cpu that supports ai windows ai features like asus zenbook s14 with intel 258v chipset okay let's talk about performance uh, this is not that important in this laptop i mean in a student's laptops you mainly prefer to talk about the laptop design the laptop chassis the laptop weight and i have to tell you the laptop weighs uh, under 1.5 kilograms with the charger included which is good but in this uh, particular laptop you don't need to know a lot about the performance but we should talk about it this laptop has intel core ultra 9 285h processor along with 32 gigabytes of ram and one terabyte storage i can say this laptop is a great laptop if you are considering buying it but because of this uh intel core ultra 9 chipset the laptop price is extremely too expensive i mean you can get the Ryzen 7 model of this laptop with just, I think, 900 bucks or 1000 bucks or even Core Ultra 7. And also, if you buy an AMD version, you can get Windows AI features, but you can't get Windows AI features with this powerful CPU. And I know it's, a, it's more powerful than Intel uh, Core Ultra 7 or uh, AMD Ryzen 7 350 or something like that. But the benchmarks shows us that this CPU is just an e-waste on this laptop. Like we tested Cinemesh R23 in this machine and we got 14,000 scores in multi-core, which is not good. I mean, the difference between Core Ultra 9 in this laptop compared to Asus Zephyrus G16 is just too high. That laptop gave us almost more than 7,000 scores. The difference is, I think, more than 50%. And it is not acceptable. It's the same story, almost the same story for Cinemage 2024. And... Uh, I can say 907 score is not that great for the CPU and uh, in Geekbench 6 we have a good almost a good score 15,000 scores but in Time Spy we got good score uh, it is almost the same as RTX 2050 uh, 4400 scores which is good but you don't want to game or use 3D applications on this laptop because you can get uh, asus tough a14 with rtx 5050 and ryzen 7 cpu at the same price and if you want to do 3d works 3d workloads or games get the asus tough a14 as for the blender benchmark we have a 765 score which is good and for the ssd speed we got 5 gigabytes for the read and 3.6 gigabytes for the write you can upgrade the ssd to get better scores uh, but better speeds but it is fine too. Uh, we tested Adobe Premiere in this machine with 10 minutes and 10 seconds render time, which is okay, but I expected more uh, because this has Intel Arc 140T integrated GPU. We expect more. And for Adobe After Effects, we got 7 minutes and 4 seconds, which is good. It is good. It is a good number for this laptop. And as for the gaming, I have to tell you, this laptop is not made for gaming. But we tested three games in this machine, and here are the results. Uh, we tested uh, Cyberpunk 2077, which is a GPU-demanding title, and you can get more than 30 FPS if you want, 
but you don't have DLSS here and you have to use Intel XDSS or FSR 3.1 uh, to get better frame rates, uh, or should I say frame generation or fake frames. Uh, we also tested Rainbow Six Siege in this machine in three different scenarios, Ultra Plus, High and Low, and we can get more than 100 FPS if we want to, which is good. And as for the Malware Rivals, you can play this game in this laptop, but the latency will be so high that I, I'm not recommending to play a lot on this game. If you want to play games on a 14-inch laptop, and you want the laptop to be an ASUS laptop, just go and get ASUS of A14. That's much better for 3D games, for uh, games or 3D workloads or anything. That laptop is a lot more powerful and you have to get that model. For this section, I can give this laptop a 7 out of 10 score. I was easy on it. I wanted to give it 6 out of 10 because the performance is just too high and it is okay i mean you have to get core ultra 7 or ryzen 7 models don't buy this exact model it is too expensive okay let's talk about speakers webcam and battery life about the speakers speakers on this laptop are okay uh, they are good they sound good you can easily watch youtube videos with it movies with it uh, listen to some songs but it is not that special and I have to say it is thinner than MacBook Air, but it is okay. So this is the webcam quality of Asus ZenBook 14. What do you think about it? It has a 1080p sensor and I can say I really liked and enjoyed the video quality out of it. What do you think about the mic quality? Tell us in the comments below. And also it has privacy shutter which is good. As for the battery life, I have to say battery life in this laptop is just great. With 75 watt hour battery, you can easily go through a day without a problem and because the charger is too small you can bring it everywhere you want or get a third party usb type c charger to charge the laptop and you can easily charge the laptop with your phone charger or charge your phone with the laptop charger because both supports type c charging which is great so in conclusion i have to say i can give this laptop a 9 out of 10 score but because of the price, I will give it a 7 out of 10 score. Get the Ultra 7 or Ryzen 7 models and be happy with it. This extra $300 for this laptop is just not worth it and you can't feel any difference between Core Ultra 7 or Core Ultra 9 because the thermal headroom for this laptop is too much. You can't even see the difference because this laptop is just thin and light and it is not meant to have Ultra 9 CPUs. What do you think about Asus ZenBook 14? Tell us in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.